I was pushing it thinking I must never let this happen again, you know? Yeah. And since then, yeah, I've, I've had some amazing jobs. I've changed some habits permanently. Um, I love life and celebrate life every day. I've um, created and sold a flourishing business. And I, yeah, I have a wonderful position in the health industry. So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by my very good friend, Tracy Kellett, who is a change specialist. She's a GM of Move Academy in New Zealand and Australia, and she also works with a limited number of leaders to create good habits. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Thank you, Deborah. Nice to be here. No, it's great to have you. And I, I'm, obviously, I know a fair bit about your story. <laughs> uh, and you've worked, you know, over your career, you've done a lot of work with uh, big companies in the media industry. You've run your own businesses. You're now GM of a reasonable size organization right. throughout Australia and New Zealand. Yes. But you're also trained as a personal trainer. Uh, you've got some psychology qualifications, NLP, a whole range of things. So tell yes. me a little bit about your history and, and, yeah, a bit about Tracy. Well, I mean, I was a bit lucky as a youth. I flew through school. I never studied and I got A's. I'd play a sport. I'd excel. And I just took everything for granted and kind of didn't look down my nose, but didn't understand people who say put on weight or got into bad habits. Well, fast forward um, a divorce and not looking after myself, not looking after my soul mentally and spiritually. And I was in a place where I was drinking too much, making bad habits. And I guess my low point was riding an electric bike because I didn't have a license for a year. And the battery ran out and I got lost and it was winter, dark and raining. And I was pushing an old electric bike past Pirimurima prison. And I <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was pushing it thinking I must never let this happen again, you know. Yeah. And since then, yeah, I've, I've had some amazing jobs. I've changed some habits permanently. Um, I love life and celebrate life every day. I've um, created and sold a flourishing business and I yeah, have a wonderful position in the health industry. Yeah, so tell us about Move Academy because I, I don't actually know much about what it does. So why don't you give us a bit of an explanation about what Move Academy is? So Move Academy is a registered training organization in Australia, which means they're audited by the government. So the standards are very high. And we have a whole lot of courses in the health arena from Ayurvedic Health through to Allied Health, which is assisting dietitians, to aged care and a health coach, which incorporates personal training, health coaching, and business diploma papers. And we have a wellness coach, which has a um, an allied health um, element in it. And allied health means you're not a nutritionist, but you can assist a nutritionist and you have those sorts of aspects. So very much um, our aim is to train 100 people next year yep. in, as health coaches, because over in Australia, people post-COVID really need that. <laughs> I think over here too. I mean, COVID has had a massive effect on all of us, right? We've, we've gone through, um, well, depending where you are in the world, but you've gone through several months, several years for some of us of lockdowns and a lot of stress, a lot of a change in terms of what we do as well. Tell us what effect that's had on, on people, do you think? Look, it's enormous. Um, you've had couples stuck together that were coping, realised they didn't like each other. Yes. <laughs> um, you've had parents getting to know their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, the upsiders. I mean, we had 13-year-old girls with false eyelashes and false nails. And I watch as an iPad's going to school buying sushi every day. I mean, that's just crazy. So some elements, sometimes um, some of it parred life back a bit, which was good. But the, 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 the results of stress on society as a whole is unyielding and enormous. Yeah. Um, we've got something called surge mentality, surge stress mentality. So if there was a tsunami in a village, People would die, people would be hurt, uh, things would be destroyed, and the whole community would rally around. There'd be mourning, there'd be grief, there'd be shock, there'd be trauma. The body would deal with it, people would rebuild, and then they would move on. I mean, they wouldn't forget no. their past life or their loved ones, but they have a process to go through. With COVID, we still don't really know what's around the corner. I mean, look at what's happening in China right now. They're mm. in lockdown again. Yeah. So surge stress mentality is like a little tidal wave coming and nearly drowning you and coming again and nearly drowning you and coming again and nearly drowning you. And the, the effect that that's having on our heart rates and our sleep is, is through the roof. You've got children who get a cold and they get terrified because they think they're going to die. Yeah. So it's changed the way we kind of view everything, hasn't it? It's put us almost into a state of constant stress. Correct. Yeah. And I think, you know, as business owners, entrepreneurs, um, we're already in a state of stress a lot of the time because of the challenges of business. And this has just added to that. And I know, I know for a fact myself, I've not been very good at sleeping recently. Um, it's, there's been a lot of stuff going on. So how does it affect us when we're in that constant state of stress? Well, we're going to see heart attacks and strokes go through the roof. We'll probably see 
probably see dementia increase. The brain cannot withstand that kind of pressure. So sleep, our synapses shrink 20% when we sleep. So if you have a, a hideous sleep, Mm-hmm. you know, for longer than a week, or you get into that awful habit of waking at 11, 8, 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., as some people do, and waking at 4 a.m. and not being able to get back to sleep. Yep. There's actually, we call it, we feel frazzled, but we actually are. Our synapses and our neurons and our brain and our communication and our brain cells is not working properly with that level of interruption. Right. There's four stages of sleep, alpha, alpha beta, theta, and, and you know, you know the four stages. Yes, so yeah. when you first wake up in the morning is when your mind is the, at its most brilliant you're kind of half awake. Yep. That gorgeous 10, 15, 20 minutes of um, peaceful awakening. Mm-hmm. Now, that's when your brain is at its most creative. Now, that's the best time ever to walk, think, color in, sit still. But instead, we grab our devices yeah. and we traumatize ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we start our day with trauma and death. Yep. So that pattern then repeats all day. And then the brain starts to get addicted to it. So... There's going to be a lot of people addicted to bad news. A lot of people are just like on high alert. Yeah. So, you know, back in the day when we were hunter gatherers, we often talk about people who live on the edge. And somebody asked me once what it was like living on the edge. And, you know, and if you're living on the edge, you're taking up too much room, you know. <laughs> yeah. And someone said to me once, um, would I do a speech on getting out of your comfort zone? And I said, holy moly, I've never been in one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you go back to your – um to the hunter-gatherer days, we exercised and we exercised that stress off. Yeah. Now, stress releases cortisol and, as you know, the fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Now, that cortisol comes into hard visceral fat and it sits deep in our organs and surrounds our organs. So we might think that we've just got a little bit of a COVID tummy. You know, I put on the COVID-10. Yep. But the damage it's doing around our organs if it sits there and you don't do anything about it for a long period of time. Mm. Now, you look at somebody running a business, say, between the ages of 40 and 60, who's been through the stress of COVID, and and they're carrying a little bit of weight because they've been, you know, doing the wine and cheese and the corn chips, as we all as we too much wine, sadly, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we're actually self-medicating. And this whole advertising phenomenon about alcohol and different wines taste like raspberry and asparagus and undernotes and tones, it's all actually complete bollocks. It's all a marketing ploy. Alcohol is ethanol. Yep. And ethanol kills our brain cells. Mm-hmm. So if you look at what alcohol does to your body, it dehydrates you, it kills your brain cells, and it destroys your sleep. You don't get that quality REM. And yet at the end of the day, it's the cheapest thing to do when you're stressed and tired. And yeah. it just seems to take the edge off the world. Well, I also think for me personally, it, it, all, it became a habit. So when I got home from work, mm. um, uh, you know, you kind of change into your, your home clothes is the yeah. first bit. And then you pour yourself a glass of wine Correct. and that feels like the end of the day. And so there you feel Correct. like you've kind of cut off. And I actually replaced it with non-alcohol wine. And it was really funny. It made no difference. Correct. Because it was just a habit and actually having a glass of something just meant it felt like it was the end of the day. But nevertheless, um, yeah, there was a time throughout COVID where every single day I was drinking yeah. I'd like to say one or two but often it was three or four glasses of wine <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day so yeah and it, it feels good right you. yeah it does it feel good. good yeah yeah but it affects you so yeah so that, so it's going to cre- create issues around the body it's going to also stop you from sleeping as you said sleep has a massive impact on how we feel yeah well the chances of a, a, a lady in high stress running a business between 40 and 60 has almost 50 percent ch- more chance of getting breast cancer if she consumes alcohol regularly. Right. So there's an, an increase of 50%. That's huge. a lot. That's yeah. huge. Men's um, chances of, of heart attacks and strokes go through the roof because the heart is an organ and it's a muscle. Yep. So alcohol stops a lot of protein synthesis. So if you go to the gym and do a big workout, mm-hmm. but then you drink, your muscles aren't getting that that protein synthesis gain. They're not getting that strength thing. They're not keeping that el- elasticity. Yep. Yet we feel like we've worked out, so we've, we've earned it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to think, is there any way to combine a protein shake with my glass of wine? I was wondering what that would taste like. But, know, someone yeah. will come out with protein powder that you put in wine <laughs> so wine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it's not going to help because it's still having the same so it's a negative impact. Yeah. Okay, so it, but it's probably unrealistic to expect people to stop drinking altogether. Um, so what can you do without going to the absolute extreme? What things can you do to actually help to improve your sleep um, and to help improve you know, the, those stress levels, those cortisol levels. So when I first look at someone, I can tell if they're dehydrated and if they're putting themselves under stress by the elasticity of the skin under their eyes, yes. by the glow, um, almost by their aura, by their, by their energy levels. And there are many things we can do. Now, ginger, I love ginger. 
put okay. ginger in everything. You know, back in the old days, they used to get a great big piece of ginger, dig it up from the ground, bash it with a rock, and drop it in everything they were cooking. Oh, really? Now, ginger really cleans out your liver and your kidneys. Mm. So if you have a lot of ginger in your cooking, fresh raw ginger, eat it when you're feeling nauseous. It's the most amazing um, product. Ginger and lemon together is absolutely amazing. So I often... Um, and you don't pour boiling water on them because it kills the property. So I often have ginger and a slice of lemon with a bit of cold water, and then I'll put nearly boiling water or cold boiled water on it so it's nice and hot. And it's the most amazing hot drink. Add a pinch of turmeric yep. and a tiny bit of honey, and you've got the most amazing tonic. And if you drank that every night before you went to bed, that okay. would just significantly improve your liver and your kidneys and your whole body's nutritious system. Mm-hmm. In our bodies, we have thousands and thousands of microbiomes in our gut. And so that's why we talk about gut health. Yep. It's been scientifically proven because I've done my neuro change um, plasticity program, as you know. Yep. It's been scientifically proven that they affect your personality. So you know how you might see that stressed, gruff businessman with a big tummy and he's kind of a little bit abrupt and yep. a little bit short. Um, what's going on in his tummy under a microscope would be awful to look at. Yeah. Okay. If, if he's eat, eating lot of, lots of white bread, drinking lots of beer, yep. lots of heavy fried foods and lots of processed meat. So processed meat is particularly bad for me. So you're talking about things like salamis and sausages and all that yeah. kind of stuff, yeah? Oh, heavily bacon. processed ham. <laughs> yes, yeah, ham yeah. and bacon. bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Make everything you become addicted to because it's salty so, and yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, ginger, lemon and honey, I can't stress enough how I've changed people's habits by them drinking that every night mm. to the point where they've made a jug of iced tea with ginger, lemon, honey and a little bit of turmeric. Yep. Not too much at night time because it... it it's a bit like cayenne pepper. It might oh, yeah. speed okay. your met- metabolism up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that really, really helps. We cannot drink enough water. You yeah. know, two, and we forget two to three liters of water a day. Just really nourish nourish yourself. Chamomile is an amazing herb when you're feeling stressed. Is there any way you can hide the taste of it? I really don't like the taste of chamomile. It's quite bitter, isn't it? It is, yeah. Honey, maybe? Yeah, you could put honey with – I mean, honey is a sugar. Yep. Um, so you don't. you wouldn't have much um, – no, no, I don't like I the taste of it. it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> you can buy chamomile pills. Ah, okay. Herbalife's got a really good one. Yep. And you can buy ha- chamomile tablets. Now, I take two of those to sleep. So, yep. I mean, I went through a stage where I was drinking way too much, making crazy decisions. Hence, I ended up on an electric bike <laughs> that, that had gone flat in the middle of a winter's night <laughs> yes. in Coatesville, pretty <laughs> much. Um, and so, you know, I make these delicious drinks for myself, like a slice of watermelon sparkling water a splash of lime yep. a teaspoon of passion fruit pulp hmm. so you just learn get become a master at making mocktails <laughs> yeah have iced tea in your fridge all of the time mm-hmm. now green tea and ginger in the morning is the very very best thing you can have before your coffee right and a prebiotic and a probiotic so if if somebody did nothing else and they took a really good prebiotic and a really good probiotic just as they went to sleep, mm-hmm. that's going to work on all the bad flora and fauna in your gut. Mm. And that's the best time, isn't it? Because that's when the, the body's actually doing all those things it needs to do. Yeah, correct. Yep. So if you go to eat something and you look at it, you, you can kind of look at it like, is this, is this going to nourish me mm-hmm. or is this going to attack me? So if you go into a cafe and you see a gorgeous cream donut covered in icing sugar and full of cream, that's going to attack me when I eat it yeah. and I'm going to feel it. So it's really about actually honoring yourself. Mm-hmm. Now with sleep post COVID, I've done work with two or three leaders that weren't sleeping, had got into bad habits, were drinking every night. The first thing we did was we created an evening ritual. Celebrate. Okay. Now you might be going through a really rough time, but your chances of getting through a really rough time or hundred percent, right? Cause you're still here. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so let's build on that. Yep. The most amazing thing a person can do is have a nighttime ceremony of thanks to themselves for five minutes. You can write a letter to yourself the next day. Mm-hmm. You can sit down and do breathing. Now a really good clearing one is four, um, breathe in for four long seconds. Yep. Fill your lungs for four long seconds. Hold. Exhale for four seconds and stay empty for four seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do that five or six times, it actually has been proven to lower your heart rate. Meditation is another one. There's fabulous apps like Calm and Aura that will give you a guided meditation that bring you in. I I, I love them. I'll I'll often put my my phone down on the floor, out of sight, out of mind, but I'll let one of those run to get me to sleep. Mm. So an evening ritual, thank yourself for what you've done. There's a world-leading neuroscientist, Chase Hughes, who I love. I follow him and I listen to his podcasts and everything. Um, he says, be your own butler and be your own fan. When he goes away on a business trip, 
he actually writes a letter to himself on his desk to read when he comes back. <laughs> Just little things like that. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, celebrate yourself. Yeah. Actually, it's really quite powerful. I remember doing Outward Bound about five or six years ago, yeah. and it was a massive challenge because at the time I was, you know, the oldest person there, the fattest person there. But nevertheless, <laughs> did my runs every morning, jumped into the ocean, all that. And then we had to write a letter to ourselves um, about the things that we were grateful for and the things that we wanted to do. And it got sent to us six months after we finished the course. Wow. And so six months later, we actually got the letter that we wrote to ourselves. And I have to say, uh, it was amazing how that had also set me up to make huge changes in my life because yes. I didn't recognize what needed to be done. Um, and then also, it was just this beautiful, you know, kind of like a, a celebration of, of me yeah. from myself, which was great. Yeah. Yeah, we don't do that enough. No. I, I said to someone the other day, you're an amazing um, colleague and friend and person and wife, but I don't know that anybody ever tells you that. She said, no, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And we don't appreciate each other enough. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're in my life. When I'm feeling down, I just ring you. And so we've got stuck into this media frenzy of, um, oh God, drama. Yeah, so and like and social media kind of oh, encourages that too, doesn't it? It does, you know, and like, you, like there was a news flash the other day, Europe's hottest summer in centuries. But somebody went back three years ago when the temperatures were hotter yeah. and they were just talking about it on and there was no drama surrounding it. It was, so like, the it was like the boats in Taupo. Did you read that one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was four boats that were completely destroyed by a tsunami in Taupo. They were pedal boats. <laughs> <laughs> And if you just read the headline, it's like, oh, okay, there's massive. But it was like, yeah. oh, they're all pedal boats. Okay, not quite so, yeah. Not yeah. Quite so impressive. Yeah. Not, not quite such a tsunami either. <laughs> yeah, sort yeah. of a bit of a tidal yeah, surge, yeah. maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So sensationalism, opt out of sensationalism. Yes. Um, yeah, completely opt out of sensationalism. Um, celebrate yourself. Celebrate the people you know and love. And I, I've actually tried saying something nice to people that are annoying me or I'm in a queue and somebody's a bit gruff and a bit rude. I'm trying I'm trying to teach myself to just smile at them and say I hope you're okay. Yeah. And you know one guy turned around and gave me a hug and burst into tears and left the shop. He wasn't okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, we just need to get back to that community spirit, that community feel and we need to start in our own back gardens. Yeah. Be nice to the people in your family, be nice to the people you work with, appreciate them, appreciate yourself. See we keep going back further and further. Yeah. Appreciate your soul. Who are you? You know, there's a really interesting thing on the internet you can do called your flow state and purpose. And it's, um, it's a, it, you look at your flow state. Where are you at right now? What's your purpose in life? Do you know what it is? Are you following it? Mm -hmm. Start there, feed your soul, yep. then feed yourself, mm -hmm. have some treats, but nourish yourself sometimes as well. Yeah. Those nights when you're tired, go to bed with a great book. Yeah. Don't go to bed with a device. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about sleep because sleep can be really challenging. Um, I know that I've often kind of woken up. Actually, more recently at sort of 4.35 o'clock in the morning and then not able to get, well, more like 4 o'clock because I get up about 5.30 anyway. So 4 o'clock I wake up and I just can't get back to sleep. Yep. But there are the odd occasions where I wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning as well and, and then struggle to get back to sleep. What are those sort of things we can do? Because I have no issue falling asleep. That's the easy part. It's the waking up in the middle of the night and then what can you do to actually get back to sleep? The breathing is a really good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, chamomile tablets really do help. You might not want to take them at two or three in the morning because no. they might make you a bit nosy. <laughs> the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, often you'll wake up and you'll feel your heart racing. Yes. You've had a, a funny dream. A lot of mm. people having funny dreams yeah, from COVID. Yeah, yeah. Weird dreams, right? You're yes. in a lift with 12 people from another race and they've all got <laughs> knives or really strange or you're running down Out the street there, yeah. and you realise you've got no clothes on and everybody's watching. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so your heart will be racing. Yes. So if it's... It is quite hard, but you just talk to yourself and say, hey, you had a good day today mm -hmm. and talk to your heart, put your hand on your heart and just say, it's okay. We're going to be okay. We're going to go back to sleep and just breathe. Just do your deep breathing mm -hmm. and maybe put on a guided meditation. Yeah. That's what I love to do these days. Yeah. Um, so what about, because the challenge with that is, you know, that means having your phone next to your bed and that almost then encourages that behavior in the morning of, okay, I'm awake. First thing I do is grab for my phone. What can you do to stop that, that behavior, that grabbing for the phone first thing? Because the best thing we can do, as you said, is get out of bed, yes. go for a walk, do yes. something that could really use the best energy of the day. Yeah, it's a hard one where you have your recordings. Yep. So I've got my favorite recordings downloaded to Google Drive oh, on, yeah. on my iPad, which I'm not inc inclined to grab so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that on the floor maybe instead of the phone. And I'm better if I leave my phones in the lounge. Right. Yep. Yeah. That, it's a real big thing. And, and it's an addiction. Mm. My phone might ring. Somebody might need me. What's going on in the world? Yeah. It's a, become a real addiction. And so to put your phone away for hours of, at a time is actually giving yourself your life back. Yeah. You know, I've gone off Facebook myself mm -hmm. because there are moments when I'm tired and alone and I was scrolling. Yep. And then one day I thought, 
I've just lost 90 minutes of my life. I'll never get back. And, and it's, called, it's called doom scrolling for yeah. a reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And probably bought three things I'll never need. <laughs> yeah, there's always that as well. Okay, that's yeah. cool. So as much as possible, we should try and keep our devices away from us, but it can be helpful to have something you can play a guided meditation or something on. Yeah, I, I would challenge anybody to go into a mirror after hearing this podcast mm-hmm. and look in the mirror and say, I honour you because, and I love you because, and you might get quite emotional mm. because you got through a really hard divorce. You got your business through a tough time. You lost your business, but you handled it. You're brave enough to face the world and start again without everything you might have had before COVID. Yep. You're brave enough to say, I don't want to lose my marriage or my children. I'm going to make some big changes. Yep. You know, you, you're brave enough to say, I loved this man once before. Maybe I can love him again yep. and make some changes. Yep. You know, so look in a mirror and honor yourself. And then every day, think why are you what are you grateful about what do you enjoy now when I lost everything all those years ago I had the ability to sit on the beach with a cup of tea and be blissfully happy and I've got a friend who sold her business for 80 million and she's never happy yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah money is is, money's great but it is not the be all and end all and it certainly doesn't make you happy that's for sure okay so so have gratitude Um, be kind to both yourself and to the people around you what else would you suggest people can do to um just to be happier, I suppose, with, and, and more comfortable with who they are. Um, be real. Now, the word depressed, if you break it down, is deep rest. And often people get depressed because their body's saying, I don't like the avatar of the person you're pretending to be. Right. So if you look at someone's personality and we say, but that's my personality, I always get uptight in that situation. No, that's not your personality. That's a trigger. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're being triggered by something. Our personalities are ingrained on us from the day we're born and they're how we behave in different environments because it's worked for us in the past. So the organism do- always does what's always worked for the organism. Mm-hmm. And so we work for things that have worked for us in the past. We've either been aggressive because it's kept people away and we don't think we're worth love. So all of those things. Having a growth mindset is probably one of the best things that I've learned. Mistakes are great. Yeah. Mistakes are really good look at it and think, well, I tried that and that didn't work. So that's showing me that I need to do this. Yep. Don't don't be in a culture like, oh, you stupid fool. Mm. And so negative self-talk. Yeah, self, the inner self-critic is a, is a massive one, right? Yeah. So yep. growth mindset. If you're dealing with someone else and they've done something for you at work, it's not quite what you want. Say, you're nearly there. It's not quite there yet. The yep. word yet is really important. It's quite powerful. Now, if I say to you, that's not right. Yeah. That's judgment and condemnation. But if I say that's really good, it's nearly there. Mm-hmm. It's not quite there yet. Yep. That's growth mindset. Mm-hmm. If I say I can't run fast, that's a, that's, stone, that's right? criticism. Yeah, yeah. If I say I could probably run faster in a week if I practiced every day, yeah. that's a growth mindset. Yeah. So I think it can change your outlook on life. Mm. It can be hard to do this on your own though, right? I mean, like trying to do this kind of thing. It's a bit like I always use the, the example of a personal trainer at the gym. I have been a member of so many gyms and spent so much money and never, ever use them. It's only when I actually get a personal trainer and I have a personal trainer like this morning who was there waiting for me at 7.30 on a Saturday and you kind of go, I have no choice. I have That's to right. go. And then it becomes a habit and then it becomes, you know, a, a good thing. Yeah. Would you say the same sort of thing in terms of looking after yourself um, there are some good apps. Yep. Um, I'm developing one for some friends at the moment that has a really good habit changer on it. Mm-hmm. It's really good to do these in groups, get three or four people together and say, over a month, we're going to achieve blah. Yep. Um, it's really good to have a daily record of your habits changing. Um, and it's really good to have accountability mm. because when you're tired is when you fold. Yep. You know, halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. <laughs> okay, That's yeah. when all progress halts. Yes. <laughs> Best diet in the world. You don't eat all day. You're yep. stuck in traffic. You get home at nine o'clock. The only thing at the gas station is a meat pie. Yep. <laughs> Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Yep. You know that meat pie. Okay, but still, I mean, you can you can get help from other people. That's what I'm saying as well. Absolutely. Like reach, a co- re- reach out for a wellness coach, a life yep. coach, a leadership coach, um, a habit changer. Mm-hmm. Work out what it is that you want. Um, personal trainers are fantastic. Yep. Sometimes we need a bit more. We yep. just want someone that's going to work with us and say, okay, it's not just about what you're doing at the gym. Mm-hmm. It's the 23 hours you're not at the gym. <laughs> oh, no, I completely agree. I'm yeah. saying that, that you should have yeah. a, a coach for all areas of your yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, a coach, okay. a mentor, yep. someone to aspire to. Now, a, a really powerful trick is to write down who you are in three months' time. Mm-hmm. And then you bring that person back and pretend you're that person today. Yeah. So once I was in once I was in a role that I didn't feel I had the experience or qualification for. So 
I just well, I have to tell myself that I do. Yep. And boy, did I step up and learn. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I made sure that anybody looking up to me, I showed them the right things. Yeah. So so write down that person that you really want to be, and, and then start being them. Time. I yeah. love it. Okay. Okay. So I always ask my guests to give three top tips or tools that people can actually use. Um, you know, as soon as they finish listening to this podcast, hopefully, because we want people to take action, we want people to actually start doing things that will actually benefit them, better business, better life. So first of all is breathing techniques. Yep. Learn breathing or tapping. You'll resonate with one of them. Right. Tapping, you can tap one cheek, the other cheek, your chin, your collarbone, and you can say, okay, I'm really annoyed about that person who just spilt coffee on my new computer. I'm, yep. at, a, I'm at a nine and a half out of ten. And do a round of tapping. Oh, I'm at an eight. Do another round of tapping. I'm at a six. So mm. tapping or breathing, the four in, hold for four, exhale for four, keep your lungs empty for four. Both of those will bring your heart rate down. Right. Um, so learn a breathing or a tapping technique. Have a little ritual for the next week before you go to bed. That's my challenge to all the listeners today. Yeah. I want you to have seven nights, create a little ritual that you do before you go to bed. Now, a really nice one is to smell one of your favorite oils and think something really nice about yourself. Right. If you actually did that for 21 days, you'll implant that thought. Okay. So if you've got something that trips you up all the time that you think about yourself, I'm never good at maths, Mm -hmm. smell something you don't like, then tell yourself, I'm going to be good at maths and smell something you do like. Do that for 21 days and you'll get rid of that negative self-talk. Yeah. Smells powerful. Mm -hmm. And the other one is celebrate yourself every day. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well... Isn't it amazing that we're here? Yeah. <laughs> of all the people in the world who aren't, mm-hmm. every day above ground's a good day. Yeah. Am I scared about getting older? No. What's the alternative? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> Forever grateful in my life. I've yeah. got two choices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people go, oh, I'm getting older. Isn't it great? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you rather have died at 28? Yeah. Not me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So celebrate yourself. You yep. know, everybody has heart and soul and warmth and something to offer the world. So mm. if we all celebrated ourselves and looked after ourselves, then we would all celebrate those around them and look after them as well. Mm, absolutely love it. Cool. Okay. So you work with, you said, you know, a select group of leaders to actually help them um, on their journey. Tell me a bit about how that actually works and what kind of people you like to work with. Well, it's people who are looking to create change and it's normally business owners. Mm-hmm. And um, I can only do a select few because I've got quite a big role. Yep. And um, and they're looking to create change or they, they something just doesn't quite feel right. Yep. Um, I'm finding a lot of people between 40 and 60 can sometimes feel um, a bit of a Freud, a bit of a Freudian effect. Mm-hmm. Like people think I'm a successful business person, but I'm not really. I'm just a boy from Manawatu who played rugby. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's that um, imposter syndrome. Yep, is quite big when people are stressed. And if people want a better quality of life, you know, it doesn't take that long to change some habits permanently, mm-hmm. but it does take daily attention. You can rewire your brain. It's completely proven that the brain is uh, has neuroplasticity. Mm-hmm. You are not hardwired from the age of three like we used to believe. Right. So somebody who has some dreadful thoughts and habits with work commitment and dedication can completely change those thoughts. Even if you're 40, 50, 60? More so. Really? Okay. More so because you've got more insight and mm. more patience to do it. Okay. So somebody at 50 who hates a certain type of person or is triggered by a certain type of event can use one of four modalities to change their response. And when you think about it, like the surge stress, a trigger is 90 seconds of a chemical release. Mm -hmm. You might see someone that looked like an ex-husband who beat you, or you might see a car that ran you over when you were little, or you might be standing on a cliff and you badly hurt yourself on one. And you think, I'm just scared of cliffs. No, your body's having a physiological response to something that happened before. Mm. Now, if you tell yourself before you react, before you raise your voice to your husband or before you um, grab that wine, give yourself 90 seconds and see what, see what you norm and put a different response in after that and see how long it takes to change. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So you would generally work, so leaders, people who are running businesses, people who want to make some um, permanent sort of life changes. Holistic life changes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And how do they work with you? So what is the, sort of the process of working with well, someone we, like yourself? We just have, um, you know, health coaches have a big conversation with someone at first. Yep. And we do their purpose and flow state. Where are you at? You know, in comes the neuro change uh, programming. Yep. And so where are you at and where do you need to go? Mm-hmm. What are you prepared to do to get there? Right. Okay, you're not prepared to do this. Well, you're not going to get there. You're going to get here. Is that a good place to start? Should we just do that? Yeah. Um, so being and, realistic rather than yeah. trying to do too much. Be be very realistic. Have small steps. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're zigzagging so long as you're going north. If you want to head north, yep. you know, you'll still end up there just a bit slower. Yep. 
and be really honest about what you'll sacrifice. Um, a lot of people won't want to give up wine. That's great. Let's let's work around it. Let's up to, up your ginger and turmeric intake. Yeah. Let's start mixing um, wine with soda water when you're drinking. Let's try all these sorts of things. Yeah. Let's just slowly. If people are smoking, you're 40 a day. Okay, we'll just smoke 39 a day for a month, <laughs> and then 38. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if it takes you a year just to quit, but st- all steps forward. All yeah. steps. And forward. I think it's a problem that a lot of people actually try and they try to do too much too quickly, don't they? And then yeah. they fail, and then that's like one of the failures and start beating yeah. themselves up again. Okay, brilliant. And so if people want to get in contact with you and have a chat with you, how would they do that? Um, hello at tktrainer.biz. Fantastic. And yeah. have you got a website they can actually go to as well or somewhere they can find out more information? Yeah, hello, um, tktrainer.biz, tktrainer.biz. Okay, so yeah. if anybody's listening and they are, you know, a business owner who's feeling like something's not quite right in their life and want to make some changes, um, then please do get in contact with Tracy. Um, there's some information, I think, on your website that people can learn more yeah. about what you're doing as well. Yeah. And if you want to help change the world yeah move move.edu.au um we've got some amazing health and wellness coach programs there yep. and so if you want to jump on this bandwagon this, and it's a 42 billion dollar industry projection <laughs> for this year you know yeah help people as well you know um yep. yeah that's a it's a really nice career fantastic hey look thank you so much for your time with me it is a weekend so i really appreciate that thank you um, and we'll look forward to catching you again, again soon. i'm celebrating being here <laughs> <laughs> me too loving it <laughs> thanks tracy it's been great thank you bye